Now, Monday night, the big one, the Jonesboro Showdown, right here in Jonesboro at the ASU Armory, Cactus Jack, one of the few men to beat Big Van Vader, is coming to town to take on the Colorado Kid, coming to town to try to take that North American title back to Atlanta, Georgia with him. Freddie Fargo, now his man. to these his, people just who it is that's responsible for bringing in the legend, the legend himself, Cactus Jack. You're looking at the man responsible right here. And why am I doing it? I know the question going through your mind right now. What do flamboyant Freddie Fargo and Cactus Jack have in common? And truth be told, very little. Obviously, when I need a new set of suits, I get on my own SST, fly to Italy, get the Brioni brothers out to tailor make my suits. Cactus Jack, on the other hand, hasn't changed his shirt in seven years. So what? Freddie Fargo eats in the finest restaurants in New York City, dines on London broil, very rare, steamed Maine lobster, Dom Perignon, Cactus Jack, burgers, fries, Diet Cokes, good enough for him. Freddie Fargo drives around in a Bentley. Cactus Jack drives around in a Jeep. So now, it's getting wider as to what we have in common. Well, forget what you have in common. I'm going why, to tell you what we have Why are you going to be in his corner Monday night? I'm going to tell you right now. What we have in common is right here in our hearts, a deep love and respect for the sport of wrestling. And neither one of us likes the way it's being diluted at the moment. Colorado kid... Hot news, hot news right now. Well, Cactus Jack, in his own and enviable way, is about to tell you why he is coming to Arkansas to meet you Monday night, Jonesboro, ASU Armory. Go to the interview. Okay, let's go hear what Cactus Jack has to say. I spent a lot of nights like this. A lot of trips to the emergency room. Nights I can barely even remember. God, I love those times. And so it is with just a little bit of skepticism that I sit here with scars over every part of my anatomy, with a brain that only works part of the time. But during those parts when that brain functions, I remain very skeptical. Skeptical of people who haven't paid their dues. Skeptical of people that everyone assumes is going to be the next big thing. Because I got very skeptical of the next big thing. Do you remember boxing's Dwayne Bobbick? I didn't think so. And why is it for every artistic genius like Billy Joe Shaver that remains in obscurity, somebody like Billy Ray Cyrus gets all the headlines, all the attention? See, I don't mean to sound bitter because I've had my shares of successes and I haven't really toiled in obscurity because I've been pretty well recognized. But everybody likes to throw a label on somebody. This guy's the next big thing. And wrestling, we're good guys and we're bad guys. Well, not Cactus Jack. You see, I'm not a good guy or a bad guy. No, I prefer to think of myself as something like a, a, a policeman. No, even better, something like a garbage man in professional wrestling. Because there's garbage all around us. And somebody's got to clean it up. You see, I have a moral obligation, not just to myself, but to wrestling's future and our children's future to make sure that the one thing in this world that's still pure professional wrestling remains that way, and it's a difficult job. But I'm willing to go all the way to Arkansas, which isn't one of my favorite parts of the country, and do just that, because we've got the next big thing there. The Colorado Kid, and when I heard, hey, the Colorado Kid's the next big thing, I thought, bang, bang, someone's going to shoot him down. But I heard that he took on Bull Payne and did very well, and I thought, well, maybe this deserves a second look. And so, Colorado Kid, I'm coming not as your enemy, not as your friend. No, I'm coming to Arkansas as a garbage man, because as anyone will testify, you leave a piece of garbage in the garbage can for one day and it gets thrown out. We don't really have a problem. You leave it for a week and it gets lawful rancid down there. By golly, you leave it for two weeks. We got maggots crawling all around and we've got a big problem. So Colorado kid, you tell me, do we have a problem or do we not? Does a garbage man have to come in and wipe the maggots off you and ship you away? 
See, there's two kinds of wrestlers in the world that face Cactus Jack. Those who pass the test and those who fail. Now, those who pass the test of guts, of stamina, of strength and courage, well, they go on to be the biggest stars the sport's ever known. Men like Sting, he passed the test. Hey, Dustin Burroughs passed the test, too. It's not impossible. But for every Sting and for every Dustin Rhodes, there's a dozen would-be, could-be wrestlers, the next big things, who are sitting there babbling, handing out chains in arcades because they didn't have what it took. So you tell me, and more importantly, Colorado kid, when I come to Arkansas, you tell yourself, do you have what it takes? If you do, I'll be more than glad to stick out my hand and say, welcome to the world of professional wrestling and congratulations. You paid all your dues at one time. But if you don't so help me, I'll scoop you away and throw you out and keep the sport pure for the rest of America. Bang, bang! Cactus Jack came to town last week. As you can see, fans, he still is the North American heavyweight champion. You beat Cactus Jack one, two, three, right here in the middle. And I hear he wants revenge on March 13th. We'll talk more about that. But I know you have to be savoring this big victory. Yes, yes, this is the biggest victory of my career so far. And, uh, well, I'm looking forward to wrestling him any time he wants to come down here and uh, get, try, try another hand at the belt. Ladies and gentlemen, it was one of the all-time great matches in the history of Jonesboro Wrestling. And right now, we're going to show you some clips of that very match. This is what you missed if you weren't at the ASU Armory last Monday night. Yeah. <laughs>